And that's really not that far-fetched. There's a lot of people that shoot in that five to six MOA in real world hunting conditions and a lot of them don't even realize that their accuracy is that low because they just haven't been exposed to it. They haven't tested it themselves. And when a 600, 700 yard shot presents itself, they do take the shot. That's what the group looks like that these folks are shooting. All right guys, so everybody wants to get into this big ethical argument about shooting distances, particularly with the advent and growth of long range shooting and taking long shots in the context of hunting. Everybody wants to get into this ethical debate. I'm not gonna do it. I don't have any interest in that and in my mind, 95% of those arguments and debates are just mental masturbation and ego twanging. They don't have a practical use. But this video, I'm gonna talk about shooting long range distances and I'm gonna leave you with a couple tools that are gonna make you a better hunter when you're deciding whether or not to take those long range shots, particularly on elk and mule deer up in the mountains. There is a massive confirmation bias when it comes to long range shooting in the hunting context. If you go on YouTube and you look up long range shots at elk or long range shots at mule deer, you're gonna see a bunch of videos that depict clean kills, dead animals, animals that run 20 yards and tip over, tip over right at the shot, all of that good stuff. But people are not posting those situations that go awry, right? The bad hits, the bull with his leg blown off, all that stuff. The blatant four foot miss because the wind call was wrong. Nobody's posting that stuff stuff up. What that does at the individual level is it makes us more confident. I know that this bias is out there, yet it still affects me personally. There are many times in the last few years where I was watching a bull and it was either me shooting or I had a client that was shooting and we were looking at the bull and we're thinking, man, you know, he's 550 yards. That wind is really tricky. You know, should we shoot? And in my mind, I'm realizing I'm getting biased because over the years and over consuming media, consuming YouTube, consuming Instagram, hearing and seeing about all these long range shots, I'm starting to think that I'm more capable or I'm starting to think that that hunter that I'm guiding is more capable because of that bias. But you have to look at it practically. I'm not saying it's worthless. There's a lot of value in learning how to shoot at longer ranges. I'm just saying that there's this bias that we have to acknowledge. I laugh at this a little bit, but what I notice is that this long range bias is much less intense in the archery world because I can go out, I can watch a video of Cam Haynes shooting a, you know, an 80 yard group that's this big, right? And in my mind, I watch that video and I think, oh man, like I, I can do that. He can do it, I can do it, right? I'll, I'll get the same hoy, I'll get the same equipment and I'll be able to mimic exactly what he's doing. But it's easy for me to test that because I can get my target either in my backyard if it's possible or I can go out to some public land in any state in the US, I can find somewhere to shoot my bow 80 yards, right? So I can go out there, shoot a group at 80 yards and realize that, no, I can't do what Cam Haynes is doing. No, I can't shoot at 80 yards. No, I'm not gonna kill an elk at 80 yards because my group is not this big, it's this big. And I lost two arrows. So in archery, it's much easier to test your hypothesis. But in rifle shooting, it's not. A lot of people that in their heart of hearts, in their mind, they think that they can shoot 400, 500, 700 yards They've never actually went out and grouped that in the field because there's some practical issues with that. Who has access to those ranges? So what's lacking really for rifle hunters is a framework, a framework for you to use that's going to allow you to make a better choice when those long range shot opportunities arrive. So the first thing we get to talk about is figuring out your hunting accuracy. And a lot of times I'll call this hunting MOA because I commonly use the unit MOA. A lot of people who are shooting rifles use that unit. Roughly what one MOA is in terms of a unit is it's a one inch square at 100 yards. And then you can extrapolate that to at 200 yards, it's a two inch square. So if I say you're shooting a two MOA group, that means at 400 yards, that group is gonna be an eight by eight square or really an eight inch diameter circle. But the idea of a hunting MOA or hunting accuracy, I don't wanna know your bench accuracy with rifle. A lot of people wanna say, hey, I'm shooting one MOA or I'm shooting a one inch group at 100 yards at the range and then they extrapolate that to all sorts of crazy things, right? I cannot tell you how many people that I've guided and I ask them, hey, what distance are you comfortable shooting at? And they'll say, 400, 500 yards, and then I'll ask them, well, what's your group at 500 yards? And they'll say, well, it's five or six inches. And then 
immediately it clicks in my mind, have you ever shot a group at that distance in hunting conditions and actually seen your group? What you're most likely doing is you're extrapolating a hundred yard range accuracy of one MOA, which is the benchmark for a lot of people. A lot of rifle manufacturers use that. You know, if a rifle can shoot one MOA, that's great accuracy. I agree with that, sure. But when you extrapolate it, that's where the problem arises. Because a lot of people say, well, I'm shooting an inch group at 100 yards, right? I'm shooting a one MOA group at 100 yards. So at 500 yards, I'm gonna shoot a five inch group. I can tell you without a doubt, this is a massive exaggeration. And this is where that bias comes in that I was talking about. A lot of people see these long range shots so they don't realize how unrealistic it is to extrapolate that 100 yard bench range accuracy to actual hunting condition. Okay, so how do you get your hunting MOA, your hunting accuracy? In the ideal world, you go into the mountains, you find some topography, some angles that are similar to the type of conditions you're gonna be hunting in in the fall. You take the gear with you that you're gonna have with you, the same pack. If you're not gonna carry a rear rifle rest beanbag with you all over the mountains, don't bring it to go get this hunting accuracy idea, right? A lot of people will do that too. They're kind of depending on a bunch of equipment that they're actually not gonna have on their hunts. So you have to be using the same gear you're actually gonna use in the field also and the same rest. And then if you can, try to be shooting in the same type of vegetation you're gonna shoot in. This is huge because a lot of people will dive into that prone position and then they realize that the type of hunt they're doing, there's no way they're gonna be able to shoot prone. And that's the case with most elk hunting, most mule deer hunting, most pronghorn hunting, most bear hunting. There's gonna be just enough vegetation where it's gonna be hard for you to actually shoot prone. You're gonna be shooting more out of that seated and kneeling position, probably five to one on these type of hunts. So in this scenario, when you're getting your field grouping, you need to do the same position and depend on the same position. And the best way to get there is to be shooting in similar type of vegetation that you're actually gonna be hunting in. Cause that vegetation is what really dictates the position you end up in. You're gonna have to get high enough to get over that vegetation to take a shot. The other one I'm gonna mention here, and this is gonna be controversial, it's gonna to make some people squirm but your gun that you go shoot to get this accuracy measurement you have to be practical about its weight i notice this a ton with long range shooters is a lot of their accuracy and their confidence comes from the fact they're shooting a 12 13 14 15 pound rifle depending on the type of hunt that you're doing sure if it's road accessible or four-wheeler accessible yeah, a 14 pound gun, go for it, that's realistic. But when you get in to these hunts where you're doing long hauls at altitude, just day hunting even, right? Like you're hiking three, four hours a day, up and down elevation, or God forbid your backpack elk hunting or something like that, that 15 pound rifle or 13 pound rifle is gonna be a problem. I know a lot of you say, no, I'll carry it. I'll carry it for the sake of accuracy. I can tell you that for me personally, and most people I know, if they're doing these type of hunts, they migrate to a gun that's sub nine pounds. There's a trade off there that you'll figure out. Sure, with a 15 pound gun, I personally can probably shoot 200 yards or 250 yards further than I would otherwise, but for me, it's not worth it. It's not, it's not worth it. I would, I would much rather carry a nine pound gun versus a 15 pound gun and risk the fact that I have to get 250 or 300 yards closer rather than having to carry that extra five, six pounds in the mountains. It's that critical. And the thing is, is when I say that, it doesn't even compute to me. Like that sounds crazy. Like you gotta get 200 yards closer, man. Like you're gonna miss opportunities. But I'm cognizant of how much weight fatigues you. Go go watch my videos on it. I talk about, you know, why people quit and all that. I'll stick that quitting video up here for you. But one of the big reasons for that is people get fatigued. And if you're carrying an extra six or seven pounds, believe me, it factors in. So, so that's my rant on heavy guns. You can agree or disagree. Tell me about it in the comments. That's, that's great. But in my mind, to get true mountain hunting accuracy, you've got to be shooting a gun that's less than nine, 10 pounds for most of the types of hunts we're talking about. So having said all that, in this perfect scenario, you've got all your equipment, you've got your hunting stuff, you're in the right vegetation, the right topography, you know, exactly like your hunting scenario. Go out there and shoot a group 
on paper at 300, 400 yards to get your hunting MOA up. Don't shoot at metal and guess it because I can tell you, you'll end up with massively biased results. You need to go somewhere where you can put up paper, actually get a group on paper and measure it. So if you can do that, you can make a trip to do that, whatever, that is the gold standard here. But I also realized that for a big chunky, probably 80 to 90% of you, that's gonna be very impractical for you to do just because that's not accessible to you. So I have a rule of thumb that I've worked through with a bunch of hunters I've guided, but also some hunting seminars I've done. I've come up with this rule of thumb that gets you to a number that's pretty close to reality. Go to your rifle range that's a controlled environment, it's a 100 yard range, most people have access to that, but take your hunting equipment, right? The rest you're going to use, bipod you're going to use, the rear rest you're going to use, all of that. If it's a pack, bring your pack and try to shoot as realistic as possible to how you would in the field. You're going to have to make a guess, but my best bet is for the hunts you're doing, you're probably going to have to shoot in that seated kneeling position. You can do a little prone, you can do a little seated kneeling to kind of get to kind of get the spread and get a nice grouping on paper. Now, the rule of thumb that I've developed is times that group by two and add 0.5. That's gonna roughly be your hunting accuracy, your hunting MOA. And some examples of that rule of thumb, if you're shooting 1.25 inches, 1.25 MOA at that 100 yard range with your hunting gear in your hunting positions, then your hunting accuracy is gonna be right around three MOA. If you're shooting two and a half MOA at the 100 yard range, then your hunting MOA is gonna be around 5.5. The obvious rebuttal to this is people are gonna be like, how, how is it that I'm shooting off my hunting gear at 100 yards? You're literally discounting my accuracy more than two times over. The reason that is, is that when you're in the actual field, that's just what it ends up looking like. And a huge proportion of that is actually using those rests in topography with vegetation. Believe me, that will screw up your accuracy a ton. It basically doubles it plus some compared to that controlled range environment. The other thing is, is you're only shooting at 100 yards. When you bump it up to 300, 400 yards, generally people just widen their groups because of confidence and the fact that there's so much movement in the reticle versus what they're shooting at. That plays in too and that spreads out group. So that rule of thumb plays out pretty darn close. All right, for a frame of reference and to consider a real data set, this this is what I found when I was doing my hunting school. Roughly 70% of hunters will shoot an 18 inch or worse group at 400 yards in actual hunting condition. This is a four to five hunting MOA. If you're shooting this type of group, that means you're not a 400 yard shooter for elk or mule deer. You just don't have the accuracy. Now about 20% of the hunters that would come to my hunting seminar, they would shoot a 12 inch or smaller group at 400 yards. If you're shooting that type of group in real hunting conditions for elk, you can make good shots. Elk have a big vital area. The remaining 10% of hunters actually would shoot very nice groups at these long distances under hunting conditions, somewhere around a 10 inch group or smaller. And this, this is a two to three hunting MOA accuracy. That's pretty darn good. And that's really the higher end of things. Sure, there are guys that can shoot better than that, but the top 10%, this is where they fall. And generally they can ethically take shots at mule deer and elk with that type of group at 400 yards. We're going to talk a bunch about wind, so I know some of you are already thinking about that, but we'll talk about that here in the next section. But if we exclude the wind factor, if you're shooting a sub 10 inch group at 400 yards, you're pretty good to go for elk and mule deer. The takeaway on this is that most hunters out there, they're shooting between a four and a half and six MOA hunting accuracy group. And that means they're marginal 300 yard, 350 yard shooters. At 400 yards, they really shouldn't be shooting at animals because their groups are 20 inches or you know roughly around 20 inches. I have seen a handful of shooters that do have you know, 1.5 to 2 MOA hunting accuracy group. Those guys are fairly rare. Almost no hunters shoot a sub MOA group or under a 1.5 MOA group. And back to what I originally said on this is a lot of people assume that's where they're at because they extrapolate their one inch group at the 100 yard range. But the reality is when you actually do this hunting accuracy grouping. You're almost a unicorn if you're actually shooting sub 1.5 MOA in hunting conditions. I personally don't shoot close to that and I know one or two guys that do with actual practical hunting rifles. So what I'd say on that is don't assume you're a unicorn unless you know you're a unicorn in this context. All of the demos that I do and all the visuals 
they are two actual scale. I painstakingly went through and made sure the vital section and the, and the groups of a rifle with certain variables, all of that are gonna be to scale. And I wanted you to know that just to pound in that these demos are gonna give you a real good feel for what things actually look like. All right, so let's look at what these numbers I threw out really look like. Let's consider a three hunting accuracy MOA group at 300 yards. So. 3 MOA at 300 yards, we're talking about a nine inch group. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so the black here is our group compared to the vitals. You can see that yes, this would be a very effective group depending on where we aim. We're obviously probably gonna aim down here on the bottom third of the vital section. You know, we've got a great opportunity for a heart shot, a clean double lung shot. This type of group is gonna be great at 300 yards in calm conditions. But what about the more common hunting group that I see? And that's more in that five to six, you know, hunting accuracy MOA. What does that look like? Now we're talking about, you know, five MOA at 300 yards is gonna be 15 inches. Six MOA at 300 yards is gonna be 18 inches. So here's a 16 inch group on that vital section. You can see now, now it doesn't look quite as good, right? That's a marginal shot in calm, perfect conditions. There's gonna be times where you're shooting a little bit back, you know, maybe, maybe some gut shots in here. So I would say that that's marginal, right? Is it ethical? Eh, who knows, it's, it's on the border, right? Probably if this is your group, you wanna stick to that 300 yards and below, even in ideal conditions. All right, so now let's consider what a five MOA hunting accuracy group's gonna look like on an Elks Vital at 400 yards. So 400 yards at five MOA, we're talking about a 20 inch group. Now look at this group. Now we're talking about a significant amount of the group is outside of that vital area. All right, so now let's take the case that in hunting conditions, our accuracy is five MOA, but we've decided to take a shot at 700 yards. So now we're talking about an in the field hunting group, seven times five MOA, that's a 35 inch diameter group. What does that look like on an elk? So now we're talking about a very marginal, way into the depths of not being effective, you know, half the time you're gonna have horrible shots or just clear miss. And that's really not that far-fetched. There's a lot of people that shoot in that five to six MOA in real world hunting conditions. And a lot of them don't even realize that their accuracy is that low because they just haven't been exposed to it. They haven't tested it themselves. So they're in that five to six MOA range. And when a 600, 700 yard shot presents itself, they do take the shot. That's what the group looks like that these folks are shooting. You know, they've got a 30 to 40 inch group and most of the time, it's gonna be very marginal. The results are gonna be very marginal. And that's on the broadside elk in calm conditions. So we've seen what those groups look like on a broadside bull. Let's look at what some of these typical groups look like on a quartering bull. Okay, so your three MOA group at 500 yards, that's roughly what it's gonna look like. A 15 inch diameter group. So this is a 21 inch group, which is gonna be a three MOA group at 700 yards. Even if we're assuming the perfect wind call and our point of aim is gonna be the center of this group, there's still a bit of area in here that's gonna be a marginal shot on an elk. Once we introduce a little wind, you can see there's a bunch of gut shots, there's a bunch of low brisket shots. This group isn't all that great at those type of distances. So here's your 35 inch group, and this is gonna be the hunter that has an in the field accuracy of five to six MOA at 700 yards. This is what their group is gonna look like. And you can see here, we're talking about, again, calling the wind perfectly. Look how poor that grouping is. And then once we introduce wind, we're gonna be all over the place. You're more than half the time gonna wound the animal or completely miss if you're shooting this type of group at that distance. All right, so now that I've crapped on everybody's assumptions about how good of a shooter they are, one nice thing to consider is that this is low hanging fruit in terms of becoming a better hunter. I would argue particularly in these hunting situations where your opportunity rate is really low, the guy that's a 500 yard shooter, but thinks he's only a 300 yard shooter, he is literally five or six times a better hunter than the guy that thinks he's a 500 yard shooter, but is actually only capable of 300 yards. Let me say that again, a 500 yard shooter that only thinks he can shoot 300 yards is five times a better hunter than an individual that thinks he can shoot 500 yards, 
but can actually only shoot 300 yards. That might have just made your head hurt. It kind of makes my head hurt to think about it, but it's true. When you think about how much you have to work for shot opportunities in a lot of these elk hunts out west, if you're somebody who's way overconfident on shots, your success rate, your success of bringing home a bull elk is going to be way lower than somebody who's conservative about their shot. Big chunk of that is that if you're conservative or you at least just know, you know, you know with high confidence where you're actually accurate, you can make a good, logical, risk-adjusted choice, your next step, right? I would say 90% of shot opportunities, the result is not binary based on whether or not you decide to shoot right now. And what I mean by that is that if I decide, hey, like I just can't shoot this bull in these conditions, you know, at 575 yards, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that I now have no chance of killing him because I can get closer. I can, I can wait until he comes out of his bed in the afternoon. There's things I can do, right? Sure. It would be best if I could kill him right now with this long range shot opportunity. Sure. That would be best. But if I decide to be conservative or just depend on my belief of you know what I can actually shoot, I have those other options. I have those other paths and those other paths, as a hunter, those may be high success rate paths. But if I decide to shoot at that longer distance, the result tends to be binary. You're either gonna hit them good and recover them, or you're gonna maim them, or you're gonna just straight miss. So that result is binary. So if you're overconfident or just naive, to how far you can shoot, it takes you way, way down the ladder of success when it comes to the hunting. And the inverse is true. If you're confident and you know how far you can shoot and you can make a good risk adjusted choice, then your success rate goes way up as a hunter. This overconfidence with shooting ranges is really destructive to people's hunting career and they don't even know that. I saw it a ton as a guide and I've seen it across a ton of hunts. I hope you got some value out of this video. Actually, when I filmed it, my intention was to do essentially this hunter market marksmanship section plus a win section and put it together in the same video. But even after being edited, it was gonna be an hour plus long video. So subscribe to the channel or just watch for it in the future. There's gonna be a follow on video that goes over the wind. That's gonna take all these concepts that I've discussed in terms of you know our real hunting marksmanship accuracy and it's gonna extend that with the reality of the wind. Once you get above 400 yards, most people with the calibers and the ballistic coefficients that are used today, they way underestimate the value of being able to call the wind and how much just general inaccuracy in calling the wind affects our overall accuracy. So I'll dive crazy deep into that video. I do the same thing in terms of the visual demos. I take some groups and I show you what happens when you add wind variability. In the meantime, go check out my elk stocking video. If after watching this video, you're looking to get a little bit closer, that stocking video will give you some tips that are going to allow you to do that. If you find these videos useful, please like them, subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys later.